I managed to reach the top 0.1% of players in GeoGuessr with no experience. In this video, I'll show you how I got there and share the tips and tricks I learned along the way that will help casual players like myself. My name's Jason, and if you like this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. If you want to see me do any other challenges, leave a comment below. On with the video. If you're on social media, there's a good chance that you recognize this guy. Trevor Rainbolt went viral, making ridiculously fast guesses on GeoGuessr a game where players try and pinpoint their exact location in the world using Google Street View. It took Rainbolt 13 months to learn his superhuman knowledge of the world, and in honor of GeoGuessr turning 10 this year, I'm gonna try and follow in his footsteps and rise the ranks of Competitive GeoGuessr. Competitive GeoGuessr has three game modes and four ranks, Bronze, Silver, Gold, and Master, each with their own rating brackets. Now let's be realistic. The amount of knowledge it would take me to reach masters in this game would take years, and I'm too lazy for that. But I did want to start by reaching gold. So I start with a rating of 541, and I load into my first game. I started with Battle Royale Distance, as I figured this is the most forgiving mode. Your score isn't based off guessing the correct country, but rather how close you are to the correct spot. Immediately, I'm thinking Europe, based off the vibe. Full disclosure, I was born in the UK, and travelled a fair bit of Europe, so this guess is based purely off intuition. But as I'm wandering around aimlessly, I spot a billboard with the domain name .ee on it. The only country I can think of is Estonia, so I lock it in, and it's the best guess. Second round, and for some reason, I immediately think of Japan. It must have been the small alleyways, but I quickly realize I'm wrong because of the writing on the walls, and think South America. I've never been to South America, and honestly, I've got nothing else to go off, so I hedge my bets and instead go for Central America and choose Mexico. Again, somehow, I get through. This next round is ridiculous. They just plopped us in the middle of a ski field with no indication of where we are. My first thought is France, but I can't remember where ski fields are, and then I see Andorra, which I know is famous for skiing, so I just hedge my bets and click it. And I was right. Honestly, I don't know how I won that first one based off just guesses and vibes, but I'm feeling pretty good. We get 13 rank points and we're on our way up. Game 2 was completely different. There were 8 people in the game and the standard was much higher. Some rounds I missed elimination by a few kilometers, and honestly, I went completely off vibes with no knowledge at all. Sometimes I even knew where I was but couldn't find it on the map, like here in Mombasa. I ended up just guessing Nigeria and crossing my fingers, and luckily, scraped through. I somehow made it to the top 3 to finish 3rd place and secured 5 points, but honestly, my lack of game knowledge was already starting to show. The next two games confirmed my suspicions. I got knocked out early on and ended up losing most of the points I earned in the first two. Also, it started getting harder to find games, and I ended up spending more time waiting in lobbies. So I decided to switch to Jewels mode. This mode is a one-on-one -on -one version of the Battle Royale Distance mode, and obviously it meant a much shorter waiting time, but it also meant a much more pressured game. I figured it was worth the payoff though. In my first round I got a little lost, but based on the language I saw, I figured I had to be near India. I hedged a little and went towards Bangladesh, but I still ended up winning a small lead. Before round 2 even started, I knew we were in the UK. Honestly, I wasn't using any clues in the map, but I'd lived in South London for 4 years and this just felt so familiar. The real estate sign sealed the deal for me and I guessed an area near where I used to live. It turns out I was out by only 2.2 kilometers, but my opponent was honestly not letting me run away with the points and we only got another small win. The next round I was nowhere near as confident. My first thought was France because of the blue door numbers, but then I saw the local language on this store and I knew it was somewhere in Eastern Europe. Problem is, I had no idea where, and I ended up panic guessing Lithuania which by the way has a language that looks nothing like that. It ended up being North Macedonia and I took a big hit in points. Round 4 and I thought I was in the UK again. My opponent guessed before I had any clues so I took a chance on Wales. It ended up being Ireland, not the UK, but I still won the round. Round 5 and points are multiplied by 1.5. I knew my opponent would guess immediately so I didn't even bother looking around. I saw the banner in front of me and made a guess in Indonesia. I was right, but it just wasn't close enough. Round 6 and we head into double damage. Clearly guessing immediately wasn't working out for my opponent, so I had a lot more time to explore here. But to be honest, it didn't help me. Apart from driving on the right and seeing what I thought was Spanish, I had no clues, so I took a guess on Chile. It turned out what I was seeing was Portuguese and we were in Brazil. I was very lucky not to get knocked out here. 
damage increased to 2.5 for round 7, so it was pretty much make or break. My first clue was a sign that had both Arabic and French on it. I struggled for a bit before remembering I had a friend who spoke French and Arabic who was born in Algeria. With no other clues to work with, I locked it in. To my surprise, I wasn't far off. It ended up being Tunisia, but it was enough to secure the win. After my first win, I decided to stick with the jewels mode on the climb to gold. Not only was it quicker to find games, there was something more exciting about going head to head. And after that game, I went on a crazy win streak. After 6 wins in a row, I had broken into the top 100,000 players, and when I reached my 9th win in a row, I had a rating of 671. I was just 4 points away from reaching gold, and all I needed was one win to push me over the edge. The game started strong. I was ranked against someone rated 536, so the odds were in my favour. First round, I didn't have any strong clues, but then I saw the cars were driving on the left. I took a chance on South Africa as it matched the environment, and I really wanted to pressure my opponent. I ended up getting it right while my opponent guessed Australia, giving me a massive head start. Round 2 had me worried. Honestly, I reckon a top GeoGuessr player would have narrowed it down in the first second, but at this stage I had no meta knowledge of the game and no clues to work off. I narrowed it down to South America thanks to some signs, but didn't have a country. I ended up guessing between Ecuador and Colombia, trying my best to hedge my bets. It ended up being Peru, but it didn't matter, since my opponent went Vietnam. I was feeling pretty confident. I only needed a few points from round 3, so I tried to go as fast as I could. The only problem was I ended up losing the sign I was looking for and having to go back to the start. Eventually, I got it and I knew I was in Turkey, so I locked it in and waited. Turns out my opponent didn't even make a guess, so it didn't matter, but I ended up closing it out and gained 16 points, pushing me to 681 and promoting me from silver to gold. So I finished my first goal and I hit gold. I was now ranked around 61,000th in the world. But that got me thinking. 61,000th is pretty good, but being in the top 50,000 would be even better. GeoGuessr has 50 million players worldwide. So being in the top 50,000 would make me a top 0.1% player in the world. I'd already made it this far. How hard would it be to go that one step further? As it turns out, very. I immediately lost my first game in gold and got demoted back to silver. Okay, so the skill gap between silver and gold is massive. Once I crossed the line, I should have realized that my limited knowledge of the world wasn't going to get very far. If I really wanted to break the top 50,000, I needed to learn some meta. There's two categories you need to know if you want to get better at the game. One of them is your basics. This is general knowledge you can learn to help you in any country. First, use the compass to figure out the hemisphere. As a general rule of thumb, if the sun is in the south, you're in the northern hemisphere. If it's in the north, then you're in the southern hemisphere. Now this kind of works on a scale, so if your compass is only pointing slightly south, but the sun is high in the sky, there's a good chance you're north but close to the equator. And sometimes the compass can get a little finicky, so take this with a grain of salt. 2. Figure out what side of the road the cars are driving on. There are a limited number of countries that drive on the left hand side, so it really narrows down your options if you can figure this out. Next, street view coverage. Not all countries have street view coverage, and this is especially helpful in continents such as Africa and the Middle East. Just make sure you keep an eye on this because Google's updating it all the time. This next one might sound obvious, but look out for language and signs. You might not be able to tell which country you're in, but this will definitely help you narrow down an area. Finally, remember to look out for domain names. Just like how I won my first game, I usually find that a lot of companies put their website on billboards or cars, and this has helped me win so many rounds. So keep an eye out. Learn these 5 basics, and I promise you'll start to see improvements. This is all I needed to go from silver to gold. But if you want to go further, well that's where the second category comes in. In order to go further in GeoGuessr, you need to learn some meta. Meta knowledge basically covers all tips and tricks the average person wouldn't be expected to know. This includes stuff like the type of Google car, specific road lines, license plates, bollards, and my personal favourite name? Holy Poles. These clues will only ever appear in specific countries and can make or break a round, but only if you know them. Now before you get too excited, this is where time separates the best from the rest. 
The amount of meta knowledge in the world is insane. Don't believe me? Head over to geotips.net and have a look for yourself. This website is made by some of the top players in the community, and they were kind enough to release it to the public for free, all in the name of growing the game. But some of this stuff is ridiculous. I mean, you have unique Google cars, unique bollards, unique road lines, even unique vegetation. Seriously, if you really wanted to learn all of this, I have no doubt you could become a top player, but it would take you months, if not years. So where did that leave me? Well, I wasn't going to spend months learning meta, but I still wanted to hit the top 50,000. I was basically left with only one option. Play as many games as I could, learn and record meta as I went, and sprinkle in a little luck. And hopefully, I would make it over 50,000. After my demotion back to silver, I struggled to get progress, until this game. I had just won another promotion back to gold, and this was my second game ever against a gold player. First round, I was a little lost until I found the language which I assumed to be Sri Lankan. I confirmed this once I found a sign saying Sri Lanka. My opponent luckily went Malaysia, and I was off to an early lead. Round 2, and this is where the language tip comes in. Clearly I was in Thailand, so I locked it in quick to pressure my opponent. Unfortunately, he was a little bit closer. Round 3 and I was lost. It felt like Sri Lanka again, given the vehicles and driving on the left, but I couldn't confirm it. So I went up the road a bit to try and narrow things down, but decided to just go for Sri Lanka and put the pressure on. Unfortunately for me, it ended up being Bangladesh and I had another small loss. Round 4 and we're driving on the left again. My first thought was Singapore, since there's a lot of English around, but I also see what I think is Indonesian, so I lock it in. It ended up being Malaysia, but luckily we get a big win. Round 5 and I just needed one win to close it out. We were definitely out of Asia, but the cars were still driving on the left. It didn't feel like the UK, so I thought either New Zealand or Australia. I currently live in New Zealand, and this felt a little different to what I was used to, so I ended up hedging my bets around Sydney and Melbourne. Lucky for me, I was right. It ended up being Melbourne while my opponent went New Zealand. We won our first game in gold and went up to 697 points. I was cautiously optimistic that this would have pushed me into the top 50,000. So I checked the leaderboard, only to find that I was 50,539. Literally a couple of points separated me from my goal. So what else could I do? I loaded into another game. And that's where it all went wrong. I lost that next game, and over the next 50 games, I never got as close as I did in that last one. I won, I lost. At one point, I fell all the way back down to 622. After a point, I even stopped recording, since I had no idea how long it would take to even get back to gold. Eventually, around 70 games, I began to lose hope. Not only was I going nowhere, I was spending so much time waiting to play games since I was on the free version of GeoGuessr. There was a decisive turning point after yet another win pushed me into gold, where I decided enough was enough. If I was going to reach my goal and stop going around in circles, I needed to get serious and buy membership. I've always been an advocate for free to play games, and completely respect how GeoGuessr have allowed free players to still play with very few restrictions. But I can't deny there was something funny about what happened after I became a member. This is the first game I had after my restrictions were lifted, and I'm in the gold division. Things started off so well, and I had two back-to-back near-perfect guesses. I honestly was starting to think GeoGuessr was just a pay-to-win game. Then I must have gotten overconfident, because I started losing rounds, until we were basically even going into round 9. That's when the game blessed me with a mixture of holy poles and domain names for me to secure the win with a Hungary guess. I was now rated 696 and had another shot at the top 50,000. Since I was now a member, I didn't have to wait around. I immediately loaded into another game and hoped for the best. My opponent was rated 758, but honestly, I was hoping for an easier game. Round 1 and I knew I was in the UK. I didn't know where Evesham or Stowe were, so I just hedged in the Midlands. But luckily, I still managed to get a comfortable win since my opponent went in Guernsey. Round 2 was ridiculous. It was a walking map, and I had nothing to work off of. In the 70 or so games leading up to this, I'd seen some walking coverage, but they looked nothing like this. To be honest, I prepared myself for the worst here and went for a guess in Central Europe. Which was nowhere near. 
Turns out it was the US Virgin Islands, but I got saved since my opponent went Indonesia. Round 3 and I was lost again. This is where Meta would have helped. A dead looking landscape paired with a taped antenna on a Google car? It had to be Bulgaria. Unfortunately for me, I hadn't learnt this and I went Lithuania. Luckily for me, my opponent was having a worse day and decided to guess South America. Round 4 and I had the chance to end it all here. We were definitely in South America, but it couldn't have been Colombia because of the white license plates. I was a little pressured here so I guessed Mexico, and luckily, I was right. But it wasn't enough. Round 5 and I was starting to feel the pressure. One bad loss and I could throw it all away. I immediately noticed we were driving on the left, and it looked like the sun was in the south, so I figured we were in the UK. But where? A little further up the road and I had it. Didn't see it? Well this van had whales written on it, and so I quickly found it and locked it in. And there it was. After god knows how many games and days of learning random world knowledge, I had finally done it. I don't even know where my opponent went, but it didn't matter. All that mattered was that I won the game, and without a doubt, secured my place in the top 50,000. Here's how that felt. Please, 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 please. Yes! Oh my god. Oh, that counts. That's gotta count. Oh, yes. Get in. Get in. So there it is. I went from being a complete beginner and casual player to becoming 42,017th in the world. Now don't get me wrong, I know I'm nowhere near that competitive level, but it still feels pretty good to have made it this far in such a short space of time. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you want to see me do any other challenges in the future, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next one.